important part of meditation practice is making vows. Each time you sit down to meditate, you should have a purpose, something you want to do. Focus your vow on what you're going to do more than on the results you're going to get. You don't make a vow that you're going to hit this jhana or that attainment. It's more that you're going to make a vow you're going to stay with the breath or stay with whatever your topic is going to be for the whole hour. The fact that you made a vow means you've made a promise to yourself, and you want to stick to that promise. And seeing the parts of the mind that don't want to stick to the promise, it's where you gain a lot of insight. But you don't want to give in to them. In fact, if you give in to them, then the chance for insight is gone. It's like finding out about the hidden currents in the bottom of a river. When you build a dam, that's when you really know the currents are there. In the same way, you set up a few walls, you set up a few barriers. You're not going to go here, you're not going to go there. You're going to stay right on your path. You're not going to wander off to the right or the left. So you make that vow and try to stick to it as seriously as you can. When you read the autobiographies of the great Johns, they'll always have this element of John Lee and John Mahabua, that they took their vows very seriously. So it's an essential part of the practice. Here we are close to the beginning of the rains, which is a traditional time to take vows. If you have three months to try out a particular practice that you may not have done very well in the past or may not have done at all. Focus on some of the precepts that you're weak in, or add some precepts to what you've already got. If you're already observing the five precepts, you want to try the eight. It may not be for every day during the rains, but more often than you have in the past. As for the monks, the, the Tadanga practices. Or you may focus on more time to meditate, more walking meditation, more sitting meditation. You may make up your mind you want to do some more Dharma reading, but you want to push things. I mean, three months is not going to break you. It gives you a chance to build up a momentum so that at the end of the three months, if something really is good, you can stick with it and make it more of a permanent part of your practice. If you've discovered at the end of the three months that it's not working, because then you can put it aside. You haven't broken your vow. And as I've said many times in the past, the, the texts talk about four qualities that go into the, the vow. Discernment, truthfulness, relinquishment, calm. And as a general set, these qualities all go together. Discernment is what figures out what you need. It includes the qualities of discernment that go into right effort. In other words, the motivation. How do you motivate yourself to do something that's really good? And how do you figure out what needs to be done? And how much effort has to, has to go into it, how much you're capable of? This is what gets into the issue of another aspect of discernment, which is having a sense of yourself. What are your weaknesses right now? What are the strengths you have you can build on? This is where it's good to look at a few of the standard lists. You can look at the precepts. You can look at the perfections. These are the qualities that were detected in the various stories that built up around the Buddha's previous lifetimes. In Theravada, there are ten. Generosity, virtue. Renunciation, discernment, persistence, endurance, truth, determination, goodwill, and equanimity. You can take that list and ask yourself, where are you lacking? And if you don't know about what it means to lack in there, you can 
think about the practices that people have admired in the past. How do you stack up against them in terms of these qualities? Because these are things that really are good to work on. Some of them are directly involved with meditation. You can do a good well meditation more often. You can do an equanimity meditation more often. And others develop qualities of the character that will transfer over into your practice. The persistence and the determination, the truthfulness, endurance. All the Capricorn virtues that well, we all wish we had and we don't want to work on. Someone once asked Ajahn Mahabha, what's the easy way to develop more persistence? He said, well, that's a lazy person's question right there. You develop more persistence by not being lazy, by putting in effort. How do you put in effort? Well, you learn how to motivate yourself. John Fuang talked about how when he was young he looked at his lifetime that he'd had so far. The more he listened to the Dharma, the more he realized that he was lacking in a lot of qualities. Just given the fact that he was born in a very poor family, he'd lost his parents, wasn't doing well in school, didn't have many opportunities at all. He said, I'm really lacking in the perfections. So he made up his mind, okay, I've got to do something about this, just can't wallow around and really bad state like that. He knew a lot of people in his own position would end up going into a life of crime. He didn't want that. And so he used that as a motivation. And every time he's getting lazy in his practice, he would think about where you've been is where you're going to go if you keep on being lazy. So you have to find what motivates you to practice, that gives more oomph to your practice. Because when you make a vow, you're going to run up times against times when you suddenly decide, oh, this is too harsh, or this is too heavy. Then you have to know when you're lying to yourself, when you're just trying to find the easy way out. So the four qualities, discernment, rightly comes first to figure out what you need to do, how you need to build a particular quality into your, into your character, into your practice. How to motivate yourself, how to figure out how much you can push yourself and how much pushing is needed in order to make a difference. All of this comes under that quality of having a sense of yourself. Which in the word listed as one of the qualities of a great man or a great person. The ability to read yourself and see what you need, see where you're lacking. And when you say that, then you stick to your vow, you're true to it, and you try to figure out all kinds of ways you can that when it's difficult, how you can make it easy for yourself. I and mean, this is the this is the trick to persistence. This is the trick to effort and endurance. Is not focusing on how hard it is, but focusing on where you've got strengths, what you can build on. So you can be true to what you've decided to do. So when the time comes that you have to relinquish something you really like, you can do it with a sense of calm, confident that okay, you are making a good trade, because that's what renunciation is all about. Relinquishment is all about. It's not you're, you're trying to starve yourself. It's you're trying to rechannel your energies, rechannel your your interests in a more skillful direction. You realize that you can't have your cake and eat it too. It's like learning that there are some skills that if you're going to pick up one skill, you have to abandon your desire to master something else. I remember learning when I was young that if you want to be good at tennis, you can't play the piano. If you want to be good at the piano, you can't play tennis. I was disappointed because I like both. But it was true. You really do have to focus on what you want and be willing to give up things. Some things that seem perfectly okay, but you have to have a sense of your priorities. And this, again, is where discernment comes in, what's really important in your life. 
And John Fuhrman would talk about building a memorial, building a monument with your life, something you, that you can hold in your memory as something really worth looking back on, looking back on with pride, that you made the right decision and you stuck with it. So even in these qualities of truthfulness and relinquishment and calm, that last one, learning how to have a calm attitude when things are tough, all these things keep coming back to discernment, realizing what's important in life, and also learning how to motivate yourself, learning how you can use your discernment to take something that seems hard and make it easier. And John Lee's teachings on the breath are a really good example of this. He had a lot of illnesses in his life, and he learned how to use his breath as a way of overcoming the pain, overcoming the weakness. And as a result, he became a real master in that topic of meditation. Something was free. The breath comes in, goes out all the time. They still haven't figured out a way to privatize that. So you take advantage of what you've got. Simple things lying right around you. That, he said, is the essence of discernment. To so look right around you. Where are you lacking? Where do you have strengths that you can build on to overcome the lack? When you have that sense of yourself, then you can progress in the practice. Make something of yourself, make something of your practice. We're not here just to accept whatever's coming our way. We're here to accept what we've got so we can know where to build on it, so we can attain something better. As the Buddha said, we're here to attain the as yet unattained, to realize the as yet unrealized, to achieve the as yet unachieved. We're going in a direction, and to do that you have to have a strong sense of where you want to go and how you, what you have to do in order to get there. And then the determination to make it come true. 